First thing I do is capture my f video using DV Apple's DVHS cap, which is free. Just Google it. It's made by Apple, and it allows you to capture MPEG transport screen streams. I I plugged in my HV20 and turned it on to playback before I launch DVHS cap, so it shows up as HV20. I'll just push play here. It'll start up the camera. And I'll watch the video on the camcorder, and when my I want to start capturing, I'll just click capture or uh, just hit source. So you'll you want to watch it. You want to click this button before you push play on your camcorder, and then type the name of your file before you uh, start capturing, so that you can just hit OK, and then it'll capture the desktop. That's really weird, but that's fine. It's, not a very good program, but it does its job. So we'll just close that. On our desktop, we have the source.m2t file. And Compressor won't read this, so we have to convert it to an MPEG file, which is kind of a pain. But we can do this with the free MPEG stream clip, which is amazing software, and everybody should have it that uses HDV camcorders. We'll just click and drag our M2T into this window, and you can just see the simple video clip that I captured and what I'm going to want to what I'll do is you can set in and out points you can see there's some MPEG transport gobbledygook at the beginning so I can scrub in a little bit and hit I for in and go out to the back and hit O for out and then just hit Apple T for trim and I'll just trim up the, the file and uh, it looks like usually the first few frames get messed up that's fine We'll just say save as, or actually convert to MPEG. We'll just say source MPEG, and it, it goes really quick because it's not recompressing it. It's just kind of changing the file headers, I think. So now we have a MPEG file, and we'll launch Compressor. Now that you have Compressor open, right-click on your, your project here and go to Source, File. We're just going to select that MPEG file. You can see M2T is grayed out, so that's fine. Okay, we got the uh, we got the source in here now. We can scrub through it and see it, or sc scrub it over there. And first thing we need to do is make a preset. So go to Apple, Other Workflows, Advanced Format Conversions, Apple Codecs. We really got to drill down here. And I'm going to select the bottom one, which is ProRes 422 High Quality for Progressive Material. And we'll just drag it up here and drop it. And then just click on that setting here and then click on your inspector over here under audio I'm just gonna say pass through so we're not gonna recompress the audio under the frame controls click the the little action button and then turn them on and then under de underlays say reverse telecine and that's all you have to do nothing else we don't want to do anything else and we're gonna save this as a preset 24p from 60i HV20 MPEG that, something like that and you save it and then now that will show up in your custom presets and you can just drag and drop that on your material and if you have what I like to do is capture if I have a bunch of shots each shot on the HV20 is going to have a different pull down pattern so what I like to do is capture as much footage I can in DVHS cap as one MPEG file and if you drop that into compressor, it will go through the whole cl the whole file, analyze all the pull down patterns, and remove the pull down properly. As long as you don't drop any frames, if you got some drop frames, it might mess up. So uh, just hope you don't have any drop frames, and you have to go in and individually export each clip, which is a pain. So now we're going to go to right click on uh, right click up here, and then go to destination. I'll just say desktop double click triple click in the this little field which is the file name I'm just say render 24p that's fine and then hit submit and uh, name it you can name that uh, the 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 render but I'm not going to we'll go down to history and we can twirl down uh, this render to watch it happen uh, as long as you have a pretty decent computer it's not it doesn't take too long this computer I'm on is a, 
a 2.6 gigahertz core 2 duo so it goes pretty quick I'm just gonna hide compressor and I'm gonna open this file in QuickTime and the first few frames might still have interlacing because of those MPEG artifacts but if we frame by frame through them you can see it's really nice progressive ProRes and it looks really nice now we're gonna take this into Final Cut Pro and look at the last the last trick I like to do now that we're in Final Cut Pro I'm just gonna show you a, a, a quick tip to working with uh, ProRes material now that we're back in Final Cut Pro I'm just gonna go over my workflow for building setting up a project uh, what I do is I start with a fresh project and I'll say I'll import that 720p file that I rendered out of compressor and I'll just drag it into my sequence and it'll ask me if I want to set my sequence to the clip and I'll say yes and the first thing I do is delete the delete the clip from the sequence then right click on the sequence in the project bin and then go to settings and under frame size I'm going to change it to 1280 by 720 and uh, square and ProRes HQ and all this is fine. The audio settings are pulling in from the the original HDV and using ProRes 100% and that's fine. So I click OK. And now we have a I'm set to 50% so I have a 1280 by 720 frame. And then I can drag in that 720 or that 1080p file. I'm going to say no this time. And it'll automatically resize it, that 1080p to the 720p. And now it's it's going to be a square pixel clip and the reason I shot this lamp was I just wanted to uh, show you a quick tip for working with super whites from the HDV as long as you keep the frame size at 1440 by 1080 in your compressor conversion all your super whites will be preserved and then you can bring it into Final Cut Pro and resize it and then adjust for uh, adjust your your clip preserve the super whites and I'll show you how to do that if you have a clip that you want to preserve the super whites like this one you might want to uh, the first thing I would do is open up uh, the video scopes and take a look at it and uh, what we're interested in is this RGB parade so we're gonna click switch to parade on a on a TV like a UV display uh, the super whites will show up but on your RGB display like your computer monitor they're gonna clip off over a hundred and so all this stuff over a hundred is being clipped and that's all in here uh, and how we can uh, bring those back down is double click on the clip in the timeline go to motion and we're gonna change the opacity and if we drag the opacity down we over here we can see those pulling down below the super below a hundred percent white and on the right you'll see that uh, there's actually a little bit of detail look at this line right here you, there's actually a little bit of detail in those whites so if we pull those down to about 92 percent we're bringing some detail back what you'll also notice is the overall image gets darker and that's kind of a trade-off so I mean these camcorders only have so much dynamic range so you try to get as little clipping as you can when you shoot by using zebra stripes but if you can't then you can pres bring some of it, some detail back in using this trick in Final Cut Pro so so now that I did that and oh and like over the clip the it might change you know the lighting might change so you can keyframe that you know uh, by keyframing the opacity For example, right there, we don't need as much, but maybe here we want to keyframe 92. And here we can bring it all the way up to 100. So we're going to get, you know, that's going to, the Im the overall image is going to change tone. You know, it's going to go from dark to light. So just, just uh, keep, you know, keep an eye on that kind of stuff. And then if we go to export QuickTime Movie, to the desktop we can say 720p uh, I'll just say 720p and that and then you'll have a 1280 by 720p ProRes HQ clip that you can edit uh, that's got the super whites preserved
And that's basically my workflow.